Yes, I, I thought about when Jesus was telling the Pharisees and Sadducees and how y'all look on the outside. Y'all look like the wood, like whitewash too. In other words, you can go to a, a grave site and see how white it looks and they paint it real white right there. And how, how it look on the outside, but on the inside of it is dead. Pass them cemeteries and see how beautiful they are, but what's inside them tombstones? <laughs> Stone, nothing but dead bones, dead folks, some dead on the inside. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let's, let's, get, I'm not going to bore y'all too long, all right? Yeah, we're going, I told y'all we're going to be doing the series, but yeah, I'm going to. This is just a few of us tonight. All right, today, all right we gonna, I, I'm going to stay at noon. I just switch stations on just for the day, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel the need to, you know, encourage your hearts. Amen? Yeah, yeah. yeah turn the book of Luke, I mean, 22. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was talking to the tree the other day, and we was talking to you to tell about divine assistance. Divine assistance when how God come and assist us. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm not going to be long, y'all. Amen. Oh, well, at the storm will be here this morning. And hey, I know you want to get back home, so we ain't going to hold you, all right? We're just going to, my daddy said, we're just going to say a few words. Amen. But you hear and you had a purpose. Amen. I thank God we all was of the same mind to be here to hear what God is saying to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, Luke. Now, nah. it's hard to pass up the Luke 30. 22, 31, and 32, but I've been going, I want to get down to around 43, I believe, but anyway, but let's start at 31, 32, all right? Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise God. And here's Jesus again in his final hours on earth. Hallelujah. He's in his final hours here on this earth, and here he's Speaking of Simon Peter, amen, how the enemy have a desire. In other words, wants to mess with him. Hallelujah, you mess with your mind. And he want to do what he can to discourage you. Amen. amen. But we talk about the mind. The sisters, when God steps in, you know, to do what He has to do. In other words, it's not because man can help you at this point, but it's God that has to step in. Because see, we we out, we we after we we out, out of our all exhaust ourselves, we find out I still have to go to God anyhow. You can call on everybody else that we could and thought they could, but we find ourselves we still have to end up going to God. Total dependency. That's what faith is. Trust God. Not man, but God. Hallelujah. But we would trust everybody else but God. Isn't that real? If I tell you something, you put all your little trust in what I just told you, but then when I let you down, you got disappointed. Well, you put trust in the wrong person because I might have got sick along the way and couldn't do it, but God don't get sick. <laughs> and he'll do what he got to do. Amen? Yeah, so he tells uh, Peter and said, Simon, Simon, behold, hallelujah, that Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as weakness. It sounds like a bad thing, but that was a good thing. What you mean, Pastor? It was a good thing. Because we all need 
accepting because we need the test. Because, in other words, Satan was going to do it, but you needed the sifting, which sounds like an evil thing, but sounds like Satan was that was an evil thing, but God noticed Jesus doesn't stop him because you need the sifting. Yeah. Maybe the last one of us needs sifting. Yeah, we don't like the attack, but we need it. Yeah, because in other words, what God, what God is doing in you, it's going to take safety. Yeah, you didn't get where you at <laughs> by, you know, without safety. Am I right? Yeah, but I want to sift you, in other words. It's like, in other words, we, what we call sifting the way they sift the flour, but let's look at the way they sifted the things back then. They separate the wheat from the shed. There had to be a separation. They had the good and the bad. So what are you saying, Pastor? Inside of all of us, there was good and that's bad. And God needs to separate the good from the bad, the good from the evil, that heart, that attitude, whatever inside of you that needs to come out, God said, I'm going to slip you from it. I thought I had it, got, I had it going on. I got saved. I got born again. And I thought because I got born again, I was all right. But when God, and I really, after getting born again, I realized I was just here and needed some help. But I didn't know what area I need the help in. But it came in the shifting when I realized who I really was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was stingy and wouldn't give and I, I had a problem in giving so God had to allow me to go through and let's allow somebody to help me before I realized but but they, before they could help me I had to be without yeah in other words long as I had I thought I had it going on I wasn't thinking about nobody else but myself but when I got without God began to show me how you used to be and by the way you used to be and how tight they got with you now you're going to know when some of you, when you see others, you're going to have compassion. Yeah, that's why you need a sister. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, and I'm going to sift you so many other different ways. Yeah, praise God. I'm going to see if you're going to give back what I gave to you. Yeah, it's all right. I wish you was only receiving it, but the time came for you to thank you. When it, Came time for you to give, you got tight. Yeah, yeah, you forgot about that 10% that you owe me. And so, yeah, I got to, I'm going to shift you even in your giving. Yeah, I'm going to see you. Are you going to trust me? See, that's the, see, that's the attitude, God. You going to trust me? Because I'm not going to take you no, to another level until you begin to trust me for the first thing that I, I brought before you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Remember he said, you left me for his love. So I got to get you back to your for his love. Yeah, don't, 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 don't fool yourself. You will leave your for his love if God doesn't shift you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I thank God for when he, when we, when I myself go through things in life, I begin to learn from that. You can gain a lot of wisdom if you just wait on Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Just wait and allow him to take you and allow him because uh, last few uh, weeks ago, I've been telling you how dangerous it is to take matters into your own hand. Yeah, because you're messing up all the time because you want to do it. In other words, in other words, I can't wait no longer. I got to have it this way. I got, it's got to be now. Oh, you take it now into your own hand. People don't hire lawyers and this and that. And they spend my unnecessary money when, it, when the deal came, when it, when, it, when it really came down to the rubber meeting the road, they were back at square one. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. Spend thousands and thousands of your children trying to get them out of jail. And next thing you know, they still win. 
Something could have been avoided if he was waiting on God and allowing the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. But so, if the sifting wasn't bad, Peter needed the sifting. Yeah, because he was this bold man that thought as long as he was around the crowd, he's some spirit. He's with Jesus now. And Jesus got his back. And it's easy to talk when Jesus is right there by your side. Yes, God never withdraws himself from you, but yeah, but he will put you out and allow you to fly on your own for a while. It's like that eagle when he's training that baby eagle to how to fly. He puts him on the wing and brings him out that when he gets so high, he'll remove the wing and allow him to flap for himself a little while. And when he begin to see him get weak along the way, he begin to go in and grab him again. Yeah, that's time in our lives. We feel like God is not there. That's when you're He's testing you. Yeah, that's one thing. That's why I thank God when he said, Lord, I'll be with you always. Knowing that he never leave nor forsake us. But the enemy, and sometime in life, we feel like, where is God? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. When God goes silent on us and we don't, can't hear from God, what, what's, what's, what, where are you, God? comes to point in all our lives. We want to know because ain't nothing going right. All hell breaking loose and don't look like children trying to want to act right for, 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 for nothing but God, where are you? I didn't go to where I'm still at, so yeah, how you going to react to it? Or, or are you going to act upon your own thinking? Hallelujah. Yes. The devil can throw you some blows in life, unexpected blows that you didn't have no idea was expected, but then you find yourself in a state of oppression because he hits you with a, a hard lick and, you, ah, and you're trying to deal with it. Even now, we're still trying to deal with issues that we didn't expect to happen. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why we pay us to keep a prayer life, a word life, a life of fasting and praying. Amen. That when the time comes, God is preparing us for the hard attack, uh, or the hard lick that the enemy is going to, that, that fiery dart, oh, I'll use that word, that fiery dart is he throwing. He's throwing them every day. Which one work depends on how you react to it. Do y'all believe that? Hallelujah. What do you mean, Pastor? All day long, the enemy is throwing darts at you, fiery darts. Some work and some don't work. It depends on how you receive. You know what it is. Everybody in there that, that got a relationship with God knows when an attack of the enemy. Yeah. Dodge didn't come, didn't stop coming either. Even after that, when it, it kept coming. Hallelujah. You could be at your house minding your own business and you get a phone call. This didn't happen and that didn't happen. Now you were praising and worshiping God. You was enjoying yourself in God all by yourself. And somebody just called your house and said something and uh, uh, hits you with a fiery thought. Hallelujah. Praise God. How did you react to the thought when it hit? Did you begin to pray and give me a word of praise God? And then did you get oppressed? It's real. Yeah, let me, let me move on, y'all. Yeah, next verse. Yes, but we're talking about divine assistance. When God steps in. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. That you don't stop trusting me. I pray. Amen. 
didn't stop the end of the, I didn't stop the separation point of the sifting of separation because you needed sifting beta. You needed help in that area. Hallelujah. Message like this is deeper than what they were even preaching. Do y'all see that? Because it, it's talking about us. We like to put Peter in there, but it's really about us. Am I right? Yeah, Peter's just in the storm. But you gotta understand, you are that storm. Yeah, you the character. <laughs> It's just that one, just use him in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And thank God that, <laughs> I mean, God's story. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That thy faith be not, but when thou art converted, <laughs> strengthen your brother. Hallelujah. Converted means when. The change takes place in your life. Strengthen your brother. You need it to be sifted so you can help the next person. Your test and your testimony gonna help the next person. Because what you're going through are gonna go through. God permitted it that what you're going through is to help the next person. Right. Hallelujah. But first of all, you must pass it first before you can help the next person. Hallelujah. Thank God that you pass it first so now you can help. But now when you were in it, did you laugh and smile or was you all willing and happy about it? No. But God had to get you through it first. You needed divine assistance to get through what you noticed. He said, when thou convert, you strengthen. Your brothers, they're going to need strength. They're going to need what's inside of you. They're going to need the anointing that God has inside of you, the word that God has put in you to help somebody else. Don't come. You're not just sitting there just because you're here on Sunday morning, but God is fitting you with his word to go and be an assistant to somebody else. Because I thought, oh, do they understand? Is it God or is it just them? Hallelujah. Praise God. God has an assignment for you that are receiving what God has said even now. He's got a special assignment for even now. Oh, God, to go and help those that need this word. You're sitting here, but somebody else sitting at home hurting. Yeah, hurting you. Family's about to be torn apart, but they need to hear what God has to say through you. Somebody at work is going to need what you got today because they're going through it even now, but God's going to use this word to minister to them as well. Hallelujah. Oh, God. He said, them that are hungry, hungry and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. So, you're hungry for yourself, but yet you're hungry for somebody else. Right. Right. Yes, did y'all hear that? Yeah. yeah, I thought I was just hungry for me, Lord. But no, I'm hungry because I got to feed somebody else. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's like a woman in in the pregnancy, she's not just eating for herself, but she's carrying a child with a child that she's feeding. It. So she's hungry for two people because a baby's about to come into this world and she's trying to keep him alive. Amen. Till she's able 
do it, fit for themselves. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, you started feeding them before he was even born. And even after coming into the world, you're still feeding him until he's able to what? Take care of themselves. God does us the same way. As an infant, he begins to feed us until we get grown enough to walk on our own. Until you get rooted and you can stand firm and you're no longer wobbly, but you can walk straight now. Oh, God. Yes, that's the way God is. That's the love of God. That's the love of a mother for a child. Amen? Strength your pride. Hallelujah. So Jesus is warning Peter that the enemy have already asked to attack you. But not only him, I, I give you, you part of the story yourself, because he even asked you for you. But I thank God they say he sits on the right hand of God. Amen. Making intercessions for us. That's confident to know that. Just like he asked for Peter, Jesus, I'm on the right hand of the Father making intercession because the enemy didn't stop with Peter. He yeah, wanted us to. Sign your name and say I belong to God. You, you know, you got saved and give your life to Him. Yeah, Jesus still making intercessions. Yeah, He getting on that earth you know, at that time, but now He's in the Spirit. Yeah, in heaven doing it right now for us. Hallelujah. Plead your case. Even then, He's making He's our advocate, the mediator. He's our lawyer in heaven. That's when you deserve to go to hell. And he's pleading your okay case before the God, before God said, God, now I remember the blood I shed on Calvary's cross for them. I died for them, God, Father. Yes. And all God said, case dismissed. <laughs> yeah. Let him on. Forgive him. Because he's a forgiving God. The enemy try to rob the minds of people and tell them you done done too much wrong stuff with God not to forgive you, but he's a loving God. Amen. A forgiving God. What if he, he didn't forgive us? We would be in trouble. We might as well shed the door for the church if he wouldn't have forgiven God. Yes, stop teaching and stop preaching if he wouldn't that kind of God. Hallelujah. Because we can go all through the Bible and find out people that were murderers and they had like David and Moses and what they did, people. What if God just threw the towel in on them? Oh, God. Where would Moses and David be today? God said, I know they hope. I see a man. Yeah, the Bible said that David was a man after God's song. Meaning that he's out there serenading God. In other words, reading him poetry, throwing God kisses, but yet he sinned. Oh, God. But God said, I still can use him. Amen. I called him because I saw him where he, I saw him where I was going to take him before he even got there. I know he had flaws. But thank God he went back and repented of his flaws. That's it. He acknowledged I'm the king. I love God. But I got issues. That's why he said, Create in me a clean heart <laughs> and renew in me. I would uh, renew, renew me to take that old stuff out and kind of restore me. Yeah, like buying a old vehicle. And, yeah, the, the body of the car ain't no more good, but the motor's still good. Did y'all get that? 
And the car, the dog tore up. Had to tow the car into the junkyard. Oh, God. But somebody came and saw the old car all tore up, but how was the motor? That was the heart of the car. I still can use the motor. Yeah, 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 yeah. All they got to do is fit in my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't use the body no more, but I, and, 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 and even that, 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 oh, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. The reason they're sitting in the junk, y'all, because they're going to melt it down anyway. Gonna be redone all over again. So it go back to the potter. That why the the potter was why the why the potter was on the wheel, the Bible said it marred in it and mean it cracked while he was making it. But what that wrong with the clock? So he said, he made it again another. In other words, I took the same clay, reshaped it <laughs> to be the vessel I wanted it to be. So all of these vessels of clay you see in here today, we marred in his hand. But even now, he's making it again, another. To be what God want us to be. Because you're still on the wheel. Hallelujah. Because now the vessel is what he wanted to be. Now they got many vessels in this place today. Yeah, yeah, you one of them yourself. But every one of these flower pots you see is a vessel. Am I right? Because it's holding what it was intended to do. That glass up there is a vessel. It has a mouth. And it has a heart. Did y'all get that? Oh boy. Yeah, the mouth is the top of it. But the heart is where the water is. Hallelujah. It's serving its purpose. Hallelujah. Praise God. And even with that glass, if it broke, they can take it somewhere there, melt it down, and make it all over again. Because he's the one that restores. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a song about it. He makes, he makes all things over. He knew, am I right? I, yeah, I know who it's about. I just can't make it. Yeah, yeah. Trent knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he be at uh, Jensen Franklin. Oh, what's his name? Katria? Israel Holton? Yeah, well, he one of them, but somebody else made it. Israel Holton made it too, but I think somebody else. Mm -hmm. Somebody named Rafika Sanders or something. Oh. I forget his name, but anyway. But he makes things new. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take this old us and make us new again. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God has made you <laughs> new? Man. Yeah, you were not nice. Yeah, me too. I just said, you wouldn't, but I'm talking about me too. We wasn't that nice. Until the Holy Spirit showed us who we really was. And sometimes you look in the mirror and look at yourself. Lord, was I really that bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what they got those with that Pharisee spirit now. Yeah, 
the spirit of pride. Not me. He told me, me. Nah, my, my, me. I've been had it going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we was, my daughter had me there listening to that something the other day about, the, you know, about a vexing spirit. You want to know what, what kind of spirit there was. There was a Pharisee and a Sadducee spirit. Yeah, back to all. You know, and that's the debate. That's the, no, 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 was he do everything right? Spirit of pride. That's the Pharisee, Pharisee spirit. Yeah, they like to debate all of them. Yeah. Amen. They don't never do nothing wrong. In other words, it's all, they always got it right and never wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise God. There's more to it than that, but I'm just, that's just some of the, yeah, in other words, that we won't recognize a Pharisee spirit, a vexing spirit. Amen. Praise God. They got it going on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I don't do this like this way. Do it. In other words, I'm always correcting somebody else, but I can't be corrected. Amen. That's a Pharisee spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Now, go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go to 33 right quick. Let me see something under there. But then we're going to drop on down. I'm going to be yeah, about to get out of here. He said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and, <laughs> and to death. Sound like that pet Pharisee spirit already. Amen. Willing, he said he's willing, but the spirit with the flesh is, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Am I right? That's what it's, that's what uh, Jesus tells his disciples. But we talking about divine assistance. So he's telling them that Peter's talking here that yeah, I, I think I can uh I'm willing to again, but not knowing one day he has to be proven. Right. To back up those words. Right. Can you back up what you're saying? Hallelujah. Yeah, we make many promises. Can you back up what you're saying? We started prayer, Monday night prayer, and when we first started out, I mean, we had quite a few people come. Yeah, but what happened, it was lasting too long. What I mean long, in other words, not the time-wise, because it ain't but a hour. But we thought it was going to be for a month or two. See, when you in up for the long haul, can you back up what you say? Yeah. Yet we need prayer. All the time. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens after the first two, three months and we begin to backpack? And God called me to pray. Because he said, the scripture said, man, shit, I must always pray and never faint. Never get tired, am I right? But we call for corporate prayer. And we all gonna come together and pray as one. Because if one can put a thousand, two can put ten thousand. Just think about all the demons we can put to flight if we all come together under one head. But God lets you know that we are ready for that. Because it's easy to say it. Yeah, many people say, I'm gonna, I'll see you Sunday, meaning today, but because the weather was on the outside, it's well, you know, I think sometimes people look at the calendar and be like, look at the whole month. Man, you know, I ain't missed a Sunday this month. It's time for me to take me one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they can get you out. I done been there two Sundays in a row. I'm gonna take off the next two Sundays. Because they watch the calendar. Hallelujah. They are those that pick their days when they're gonna be and when they're not gonna be. But I'm just sharing this with you. You know, I know it's Holy Ghost. Amen. That 
There are those that, hey, man, I don't care what I'm getting out of here tomorrow. You don't think about it. You don't even debate whether you're going to God's house or not. Because I need to be there. Amen. When pastor, I get tired of what gets you. God already knows your condition. Oh, God. If any time you need to be energized, it's going to be through the word of God. I want to, I want to, I want to just throw this at you. Since you've been here, did you have to pick up a hammer and a nail and fix something? Did I ask you to sweep the floor or anything? Am I right? I didn't tell you to do nothing in here, but all you had to do was come in, sit down, and listen to what God has to say. Now, whatever way the rest has been sitting in here, hearing what God has to say. Now, if you was going to work, I could see you complaining. But you come in here just to sit down and get what's the best for you and to be fed by God. But you didn't come here to go to work either. The only person who's working right now is me. And this ain't hard to do, but when I leave and realize how much energy I can put out, I start getting sleepy. Why my daddy couldn't make it home when he pulling on side of the road taking a nap. Now I see why he was getting naps. <laughs> Cause I'm doing it now. <laughs> yeah, she was on her foot then. Hallelujah. But it's real. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> go, go on down. Come on. Yeah, I might hurt on you all Trying to get to 43. Yeah, I might have to skip to you. And he said, I tell thee, Peter. The crocs shall not throw this day before thou shalt thrice or uh, three times to die, <coughs> three times or to deny what thou knowest me. Amen. In other words, you're going to know three times before the, the rooster going to crow three times before you even admit you even know who you even know me. Yes, you're going to go even deeper than that. See, Jesus didn't say you're going to be cursing. But he did all that too. He just said, you're going to deny me. And Peter's going to make it real too. Yeah, you know how Peter said, I don't know him. I don't know, but Peter made, made it known. I don't know that song, song, song. He's going to make sure. In other words, he's going to make it sound real. I never knew him. You know how you can get your attitude, so back against the wall. Yeah, because I was in front of some hard to mouth speaks. Next verse. Thank you, Lord. Yes, and he said unto, unto me, when I sent you without praise and script and shoes, lack anything, and they said <clears throat> nothing. Remember when I sent you all out empty hand? Y'all didn't have a thing, but did you, when you got out there, did y'all come show or anything? Did you win nothing? Well, you went out there on my word. But now you want my baby. But while out there, did you lack anything? Were well, you without anything you needed? While you were out there, Evangelizing. Hallelujah. That's saying something right there for us Amen. that belong to God. I give you an assignment. You kept it and not to give. That's assurance right there in our lives. When we think we lack him, but if you belong to God, God is letting you know. They went without anything. Didn't have money if they were purse. They didn't have a wallet or purse in their hand. They were empty handed, but yet they were well taken care of. Wasn't on welfare either. Didn't depend on the government either. But they depended on God. Hallelujah. 
is Jesus. Teaching. Great. Next place. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his crib, <coughs> he that hath no soul, let him sell his garment and buy it. Oh, and now y'all take everything, because now I sent y'all out there with, with I do not want y'all to get what you need. If you don't have it, you got something to sell, sell it and get you a, a weapon. Can y'all see that? See, now y'all didn't have it, now I want y'all to obtain it. Okay, because of, now you're, you're back in. I'm not sending you out. In other words, you're not walking by faith. Notice how he does it. One time he tells him, don't take it. This time he said, take it. See, now you're not going to be dependent on that stuff anyway, but I'm going to let you know, when I sent you out there, I sent you by faith. Hallelujah. Next verse. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. For I say unto thee that this that is written must be accomplished in me. In other words, I must accomplish all things. Amen. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an, have an end. Amen. He that reckoned among the transgressors. Amen. For the things concerning me have end and everything that's been said about me. You know, what's going to have an end, what the world is saying about me, okay? It's going to come to an end. I'm about to leave out of here. Amen. Notice, he's, he's giving final instruction. Hallelujah. This will be the last time in Jesus speaking here on this side in the human body. But the next time when they, after the cross, it will be, we are speaking to him in the spirit realm through prayer. Hallelujah. Next phrase, come on. Yes. Getting there. We're getting there. Thank you, Lord. Verse 38. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two souls. And he said unto them, it is, it, it is enough. Amen. Next verse, come on. Glory to your name. And they came, <clears throat> he came out and went as he as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. Go ahead and on to the next one. Amen. And when they and when he was at that place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Here, he's in the garden of Gethsemane. And he asked Peter, James, and John to come with me to pray. I need, now notice this. You rarely ever see Jesus asking them to do anything. They was always calling on him. But this particular time, he's asking them to come assist him in prayer. Hallelujah. Think about it. All that time, he's been, they've been calling on him. But this particular time, he's asking them, come agree with me in prayer. Because see, when the enemy is riding you, you want somebody to be in agreement with you in prayer. He was God in flesh, but yet he was very much man. Hallelujah. Yeah. In other words, the enemy was riding him just like he do us. You thinking about the reason I came was to die. So now you're in agony knowing something about to happen to you. Think about this, the storm comes and how people just go, go to the supermarket and just buy up everything. 
because they're aware of what's coming. Am I right? They flee the city running from what only God can keep them from. There are people that flee the city and ran into trouble. Uh, Katrina had a little friend in uh, Holly. She's still with last year with Michael, the Stone Michael hit Mexico City over there. They stayed right there in Panama City. And they was they were gonna sit it out, but you know, you know how the husband now he I'm my I'm, he's my chill, so he ain't going nowhere. But finally he moved, but did him going east, I mean west, he goes right in the eye of the storm. Trying to flee from the storm, but he runs right into the eye of it. Letting you know that you can't run from, from God. God already told me, you cannot flee from my presence. Don't even try. That's why he just said, look, even if you made your way up in hell, I'm still there. Hallelujah. And so he's there needing assistance from men to pray with him. Hallelujah. And he was withdrawn from about a stone's cast. He was about a stone. In other words, a, a stone cast. He, he was close to him, so in other words, they used the word stone cast. Meaning you could throw a stone for the distance that he was apart from there. Can you, in other words, they were all right there. Divine assistance. Hallelujah. And kneel down and what? Pray. Hallelujah. Next verse. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Saying, Father, if it be, if, if thou be with me, remove this cup from me. What am I about to go through? If there's any way around this, can you just please take it out of the way, God? Remove this thing. I know my purpose, but maybe you just, you know, wanted me to come down. I'm, see, I'm, I'm paraphrasing you, all right? Maybe you just wanted me to come down and, you know, and you had another way of doing this thing. But the Bible said he spared not his own son. Yeah, it lets you know God letting you know I didn't prepare my own son, so what about you and me? So he said, what about if you can just take this cup? In other words, this your plan. And this is your plan if you can change your plan. And you know, and I don't have to go through what I'm about to go through, maybe. You know, but and so we know this God don't change his plan. Jesus, you gotta go through it. Hallelujah. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. It was your will from the beginning. It's going to be your plan to the end. Hallelujah. Praise God. Next praise we go. Thank you. Scripture talks about the way <clears throat> they didn't spread it out there, but what happened when he went to pray? The other disciples got sleepy. We went so much. They got sleepy. <laughs> Jesus, Luke doesn't bring it out, but the others, John, I think they bring it out there. The men got sleepy. Hallelujah. We 
When you need it the most, do people fall asleep on us? Hallelujah. I need you right now, but that's what happened when you need it the most, people run. When the pressure is on, they, uh, yeah, I can't deal with that. I'm going to get out of the house. I'm going to leave the ministry because, yeah, things ain't like we think they should be. But we need you to help out. Yeah, because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, but we get sleepy on the job. Yes, you know, still God is taking us now. I done all I know how to do. I exhausted all my means, all my finances, but <laughs> I need some divine assistance now. I got caught between a rock and a hard place in my life. My children acting up, the husband, the families are acting up. But God, <laughs> I need your assistance now because it's too big for me. Can y'all see that? Yes. When Jesus needed them the most, they got sleepy because the enemy was, the Bible said, they call it the rock of agony where he was praying and, and how he began to sweat. Yeah, they got a term for that. I think I, I dare not pronounce the name, but doctors, it's like a hemorrhage. It's a term for like hemorrhage and blood. In other words, you can be under so much pressure that the enemy can rise you so hard and you under so much pressure. I thought about, uh, I remember Bush was saying how my dad, when he was going through his chemo, and his, in other words, he began to sweat through his, uh, his arm. He began to see blood coming out of his arms. The pressure was on. He may not have said it, may not even know what was taking place in his life, but he was so much under pressure because of what his body was going through. You just think his blood's coming through the your pores of your skin, but because Jesus was so agonized at that point that the sweat began to turn into blood. Then you know that can happen to us too if we get that bad. Blood will come right through your own pores when the pressure is really on. Because nobody knows what you're dealing with but you. Yes, yes. So I begin to understand what you was talking about. And they began when Jesus was sweating so because he was so in agony. I must die, but. And there's no other way but God. I need you. I need you, Lord. I got to have you right now, God. Yes. Yeah, Mary anointed my body for my burial. She was anointing me for the burial, but now it's time. Hey, I'm in my final hours here on earth now. Can you see the agony now? Sweat. The pressure is on. Your blood pressure rising. Which way to go, God? I don't know which way to go, but right now I need divine assistance. Amen. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Divine assistance. Got to have your assistance, God. I, got, I, I need you, so that's why I'm praying. I, I brought my brothers to come help me, but. <laughs> They got sleepy. The enemy caused them to go to sleep on me. Yeah, I need y'all, sweetheart. Yeah, I need y'all, brothers and sisters. The pressure is on. Yes. Hallelujah. It ain't time to fight, but it's time for us to come together as one. Because we need divine assistance. In other words, the Holy Ghost don't come to we get with one to call. It's going to take all of us to pray fast. Stay in the Word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's lying, he's 
just there praying and he gets up and look around the boys is laying there on the rocks leaning. Walks over, Peter, James, son, get up. Wake up, boys. I pray that y'all don't fall into this temptation. But I need y'all to be in prayer with me. I need your help. He goes back and begins to pray again. Next thing you sleep again. They meant well. They meant well. That's when he turned it on. The spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Even in the body of Christ, the spirit is willing, but our flesh get weak. We get weak along the way. God, I want to do the right thing, but I want to be with him, but my flesh is weak, God. I get tired. You know I just love worry, God, but I'm tired, but yeah, but I I still need y'all to pray. I still need to help prayer. Because we're in the spiritual battle here. You gotta understand that it's deeper than what you think. It ain't about me and you, but it's about the spirit realm, because we're dealing in the spiritual world. The enemy gonna riot you all and this y'all stay together and, and fight that battle in the spirit realm. Yes. 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 You're about to close every door that's open to the enemy. You gotta shut that door. Hallelujah. Thank God for God. I said, thank God for God. When God saw that the men got weak, and there appeared an angel unto him. What? Glory. From heaven to strengthen him. So what man couldn't do, God sent him from heaven. Woo, glory. The strength that he needed didn't come from him, but God said, I'm going to send him from heaven. She the angel said, Jesus, God has sent us to strengthen you. Hallelujah. To make it to the cross, he had to be strengthened. In other words, the king administered to him. We all need godly assistance because man ain't going to let us down. You got haters out there would love to see you fall and go down, but God was sent with us was necessary, but it won't come from the earth, but it will come from above. You can try to hold me down all you want to, but God going to strengthen us from above. I just me with you too. You didn't think you could get through it until God gave you strength. You were caught with your rock, but you come to the rock and hard place, but until God strengthened you. You wondered what it all came from. God heard you pray. You were sincere. The prayer of a righteous man of very much. Can y'all see what God is saying here? If Jesus needed divine assistance, what about us? God, I need to get through this thing. It's tough. It hurt me, God. 
Call on my sister and brother. I got on the phone and we begin to pray for him. <laughs> they got sleepy. They want to talk to me. So when I got finished talking to them, I got to tell you to myself. And begin to tell you, God. Here I am. Yeah, I didn't come to beg you for anything, but you know I need help right now, God. You know the flesh is tired. It had all I can take, God. But right now I need strength from above. Open up the floodgates of heaven and let it rain right now, God. Rain on my weary soul, God, because I need it. I need strength from above. Yes. Yes. They've been calling on me all the time, God, but now it's my turn. It's my turn, my God. I prayed for many, but and they got delivered, but now it's my turn. I need to be strengthened right now. Have you ever been there? Yes, I can pray for this one and that one. And they got delivered, but not my turn. I, I, I'm going through what they were going through now, but God, only you can help me. My soul has been, been antagonized right now by the enemy, but God, only you can calm my spirit down right about now, God, because I've been doing it for a while, and I need you to calm it down. Yes. You're going to take me through it. Because <laughs> after all, the enemy don't see the victory at the end of the thing. Because after all, when he dies, the victory comes. Oh, God. I need divine assistance. I need God to intervene on my behalf. I need him. Every day of my life, not just one day, but every day, I need godly assistance. To raise my children, I need godly assistance. To deal with people as a whole, oh God, I need godly assistance. So right now, God, I'm asking you to strengthen me. I need strengthening. I need strengthening. We all need strengthening at a time in our lives. Just when you think you can take no more, God sends that angel. Give you the strength because he know that sits your heart, that prayer that you're praying, I hear you cry, baby. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God just let us know that how in life he didn't call us to try to fight our own battles. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Hallelujah. I thank God I have a God I can go and call on and he can hear and hear my prayer. I've been in some situations in life and God, if you didn't bring me through it, I wouldn't have made it through it. Oh God, you keep showing yourself strong and mighty to me, God. Yeah. I see the hand worship God. I've seen, seen God move my own eyes. And in other words, it, it could be your testimony, but I saw it with my own eyes. I see how God has strengthened me even now as we go through things in this life. I saw how he strengthened me through my dad passed, my mother passed. I see how he gives you strength to deal with that. Yeah, I cried, but he gave me the strength to go through it. 
But I'm going to be strict not just for that moment, but I'm going to be strict and even afterward that it took place. Yes. And if he don't give you the stretch, most people get you have to go to doctors and get shots and get on medication, but when God's stricken you, for the joy of the Lord, that is your strength. That's why you don't let nobody steal your joy or take your joy. Because you're going to need strengthening from above. Hallelujah. And after God strengthened him, Jesus tells the boy, get up. The boy said, said rise up. Let's get out of this God. I got what I need. God then gave me the strength. Come on, boy. Rise up. Let's go. I got the victory now. I couldn't have made it without him. I said, I couldn't have made it without him. So, boy, let's get out the garden. But on the way out, here comes the devil. Because he's telling us that, 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 that Judas is on his way with the crowd, with the soldiers now. And so I needed what I, I got what I needed from above. Because the boys fell asleep on me. <laughs> They may, got, may have got sleeping, but God didn't. Don't sleep no slumber. <laughs> and while you were riding the storm out on yesterday, it was all God. It was all God. That protected your home from any tornado, any flood. It was all gone. Give God the glory in this place. And thank him a lot. Just one minute of worship and praise. And thanking God as they play this music song. Just thank God for a minute. And thank him for his goodness, his kindness, and his mercy. Even now, he's still keeping us. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this hour, oh God, that you said before. We thank you because you allowed us to make it in. We thank you. The storm is even raging even now, oh God, affecting others, oh God, but God, you allowed it to get past us, oh God. And thank you, dear God, for your keeping power. You protect us from hurt, harm, and danger, God. You Protected our children, our families, oh God, from hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, oh God. Because you come. You rule the winds, the waters, the waves, oh God. The trees, oh God. You come, Almighty. You're the God of creation. You rule your reign. You're the sin of our joy, oh God. Oh God. Heaven and earth adores you, oh God. We, we bow down before you, God. We just thank you. Oh, just thank you for yourself right now. Give God the thanks. For whatever he brings to your mind and your heart, you thank him for. saving us, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for allowing us to even open doors to this building today, God. Oh God. Maybe if you were numbered with God, we are still great with you among us, oh God. Those that had a desire to even be here, God, we thank you for them too, God. 
We watch over them as you keep their families, oh God. Keep their children, oh God. We thank you for them right now. Thank you for the food, oh God. Thank you for the shelter, oh God. Thank you for the finances. We thank you. Thank you for you. Just take and get we. Thank you for your blood covering. Oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the sweet home Christian Center ministry. We thank you. Thank you for traveling grace. Travel to and more. Back and forth the work, oh God. Up and down these dangerous highways and byways and out of town. And those that may have went out of town, oh God. And those that may go out of town. Keep them. Watch over them, oh God. But we thank you for already taking care of them. Thank you for you keeping this ministry. Both physical, spiritual, and financially. We thank you that we don't really to be kept because of you, God. Thank you for putting me in the hearts and the minds of the people, oh God. Oh God. From the inside out, God. From the ground, from the inside, and those, oh God, care for it both ways, oh God, inside and out. Keep them. The teachers, oh God. The intercessors, oh God. Thank you for our, the praisers, oh God. We thank you. The autoritas, oh God. The ushers, oh God. The deaconess, oh God. The deacon. We thank you for the people of God and continue to use and continue to watch over, oh God. To God be the glory. I said to God be the glory. Yeah. To God be the glory yeah. for the things He has done. The things He's doing right now. And the things He's going to do in our future, oh God. To God be the glory. I get the glory, God. Get the glory for this second Sunday in July, God. Oh, God. Thank you for those that made it their way out here tonight, today, God. As you lead them back to their home, say, oh, God. And continue to watch over them, not just today, but down through the year, God. You're not a one-day God, but you're a year-round God. 24-7 God. A 365 days a year, God. As you keep your people, Lord. Thank you. As you continue to make provision for us, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you.